this is Lori Boucher with Painted Heart Market. And today, I want to walk you through the steps for my swag bag giveaway. It's actually looking to you probably right now like the world's smallest stencil project, but it's actually a huge lesson on stenciling on wood. It's actually the same process that I used to create the farmhouse sign you see on my wall. Basically, it's a wood sign, and I've painted the background white and then stenciled black on the top. Now, one of the problems with wood stencils is the edges tend to get real feathery, kind of out of order, and it doesn't look attractive if it's a messy looking stencil. So I wanna walk you through a process today with my very simple little kit that'll show you how to overcome any issues with fuzzy lines on your stenciling. So in your kit, you would have gotten a clothespin, you would have gotten a blue paper stencil. It actually is a vinyl stencil. It has paper on the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and complete the project today so you know how to do it. You could probably do it in just a few minutes in your home. And we're just gonna create a cute little chip clip. So something to attach to the top of the chip bag, keep the crumbs from falling out in the pantry floor. So today I'm just gonna use some acrylic paint um, on my clothespin. And Deco Art actually sent me some of their premium paint to give a try on my stenciling. I've used it both on wood and on pillows, and it does a really good job. It has a thick, creamy consistency, so it works great with stencils. So today I'm gonna to be using their Titan Buff and Carbon Black. And I've got a little bit of paint put out here on the tray, which you can see is probably 100 times more than I need. So I'm gonna go ahead and just base coat the top of my clothespin with the buff. It kind of matches the color of the wood, but it's doing a good job of sealing it. Now this would be the same process that I used to get the background on this farmhouse sign. I'm gonna set that one aside to dry and I have one that I painted previously and it's nice and dry. You always wanna make sure that your project is dry before you start to stencil another color over. Now you have the little paper stencil in your packet, and it's actually a three-part stencil. I've divided it just a little bit so you could see. There's a paper backing, there's a tape, a clear tape front, which is called transfer tape, and in the center is a vinyl stencil. Now this is actually a negative stencil. And stencils are actually used to block out part of your work from receiving paint. So in this particular project, I blocked out all the parts of the clothespin that are be covered by the blue, and where it looks like it's white, it's actually empty, and the paint will be able to get through to the clothespin right there. So on my farmhouse sign, I blocked out the white, and I opened up the stencil where the black lettering is, so my black paint flow through well. So the first thing to do is to peel, flip the stencil over and peel the paper backing off of the stencil. So now I'm left with just two pieces, the blue vinyl and the clear sticky tape. Now transfer tape helps you transport a stencil to your project. And this is a teeny tiny stencil, so you probably could peel it off and do fine laying it down. But stencils tend to lose, especially sticky vinyl stencils, their integrity when you pull them off their backing. So the transfer tape serves to hold it all together. Now I'm gonna set my stencil down a little bit off, so let me move it over just a little bit. I want it to be centered right there in the top of the clothespin. You can see how I adhered it. And I can even take a little tongue depressor and make sure I've got it all the edges burnished down. This is something I definitely would want to do on a large project like my sign. And then now that I've got that all completed, I'm just going to take a corner of the clear transfer tape and pull it back off. I use a rolling method, just kind of pulling it across. Don't pull up, it tends to pull your stencil apart. Now, it seems like the most obvious thing to do would be to paint this arrow black, but that's where we get into trouble with our stencils bleeding through on wood. Sometimes, as good and hard as I try to seal a stencil, there'll be a little gap 
So what I do is take a little bit more of the base color and my first layer of paint that I'm gonna put across my design is actually the same color as my base coat. So you can see that I've actually painted the arrow exactly the color that it shows on the back, which is exactly what I did in my farmhouse sign. The first layer behind the word gather matches perfectly to the background of this sign. Now this is drying pretty quickly, and this paint is great to dry quickly too. So I'm gonna go ahead, as long as it is, give it just one more second. I'm gonna go ahead and get just a little bit of black. I have like enough paint for a hundred clothespins right there on my surface. But I'm going to now put black over top of my design. You could probably even just use your finger to dab the paint on this little teeny tiny project. Notice both times when I'm putting paint on my stencil, I'm not brushing across, I'm actually patting up and down. And that's also key to having a clean stencil. The last thing that you wanna do is lift up the corners of your stencil yourself, and it's easy to do if you're brushing across. So always remember to pat up and down. If I'm doing a really big project, I actually will use a small sponge roller and roll across or up and down and it works great too. So now I have covered over my design with black paint and now it's time for the big reveal and this is really simple to do. You don't have to wait for it to dry. Just grab a corner of your stencil material and pull down and voila, there is your pretty little arrow and you can see that the edges are really tiny, really crisp. I've got that really thin line right down the center of that arrow, and it's just sharp as it absolutely could be. Now, I know this is a tiny little silly project, but you know what? This would be a great little gift to give someone if you just had a small gift you needed to prepare. Quick, easy, get your pack of clothespins, make you some stencils, and go for it. So, I hope you enjoy um, your project in your swag bag. Um, stop by and see me. My booth is E19. I will be painting pillows, stenciling pillows. This is this pillow that I'll be stenciling in my class at 3.30 on Friday. There's still room to sign up. But during both days, Friday and Saturday, all day, I have 10 to 12 different designs. You can come by my booth. Um, you can just take a look at what we're doing. Or if you'd like, you can sit down and stencil your own pillow. The process is fairly similar, and um, I think you'll be glad to take a, a lovely item home to put it in your living room. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you at the Pinterest conference. Hope you enjoy the gift. Thanks a lot, and see me um, at Painted Heart Market booth E19. Thank you.